Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. President, as the president and on behalf of all the judges of the trial chamber, I would like to welcome the co-prosecutors, the deputy co-prosecutors, the co-lawyers for civil parties and the lawyers for civil parties, defense counsels for Nguyen Chi and defense counsel for Kiu Samporn for your presence in the trial management meeting this afternoon. According to Internet Rule 79.7, Trial management meetings are held in camera unless the trial chamber decides otherwise. The trial chamber has received the request from the Nunchi defense and the Kiel Sampon defense to open the trial management meeting to the public. The prosecution and the civil party co lead lawyers have not objected to the request but emphasized the need to safeguard the confidential ongoing investigations in cases 003 and 004. The chamber decides that the trial management meeting will be held in open session for the public interest. This ruling is conditional. There is the confidentiality of cases 003 and 004 must not be compromised. The trial chamber notes that the prosecution is in the best position to identify any such potential compromise because it has access to cases 003 and 004. The chamber invites the prosecution to alert the chamber of a any potential breaches of confidentiality during the trial management meeting. Yesterday, the Noon Chi's defense provided the chamber and the parties with a courtesy copy of a motion in relation to the disclosure of statements from cases 003 and 004. The motion was filed today in both English and Khmer. In the motion, the Nguyen Chi defense requests the chamber, among other things, to schedule a trial management meeting to facilitate the parties' discussion on the ongoing disclosure process and the possible way forward. and to postpone the hearing of two TCW803 and two TCW809. After briefly hearing the parties on the postponement of witness to TCW803, the Chamber informed the parties by email that today that it will not hear the testimony of two TCW803 as previously scheduled and will instead hold a trial management meeting to allow the parties to fully discuss the ongoing disclosure process for statements from cases 003 and 004. Each of the parties will have 20 minutes to make submissions. 
de son point de vue en la matière. The chamber now gives the floor to the Nguyen Chi defense. La parole à la défense de Nguyen Chi. As à son tour, comme tu l'as dit, the initiator of the request. Tu as the floor. C'est la défense de Nguyen Chi qui est qui est à l'initiative de cette demande. Vous avez la parole. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, good afternoon, Your Honours. Um, today, uh, we filed a motion, as you said, Mr. President, Mesdames relating to the ongoing disclosure of statements from cases three and four into our case file. We did so because, because we wanted to make sure that this chamber fully understands the situation that we are facing when you are deciding uh, the best way forward. We did so because the information that the prosecution has provided to you about the disclosures so far paints a completely different picture about the impact that these disclosures have had on us. Uh, we filed our motion and I'm making these submissions today because we need you to understand the extreme challenges and difficulties that the disclosures Disclosures have created for us and for, for the trial in general. Um, I have tried to highlight some of these difficulties in uh, our oral submissions uh, throughout uh, the trial segment. But given uh, that the Chamber has advised that it is now working uh, on a way forward, we want to put this information before you and work together with the Chamber and parties to come to an appropriate solution. Uh, as, as I have said earlier, but we'll say again, uh, we are not trying to obstruct these proceedings or stop them from happening. Our client has always been very clear he wants the proceedings to go forward. But the question is how we can do so in a way that protects his rights to a fair trial. Now, Mr. President, it seems from our brief discussion on the matter yesterday that there may indeed be some misunderstanding from the Chamber regarding what has been disclosed to us and when. So I think it would be useful for me to begin by providing an overview of what we have received, at least until today. Uh, since last year, we have been receiving witness and civil party statements disclosed to us by the international uh, co-prosecutor with the permission of the international co-investigating judge, uh, but without uh, the apparent support of the national uh, co-prosecutor. We received uh, the first binder of statements in uh, November 2014. Um, they delivered a few more in uh, late January. Uh, however, we received approximately 80% uh, of the documents uh, within the last two weeks, uh, including some documents which were dropped off to us only yesterday morning as we were on our way to court. Uh, not a, uh, International Deputy Co-Prosecutor took pains to point out yesterday that the documents uh, received yesterday were only translation of documents. Uh, and sure, he was right. However, what he failed to mention was that they included translations of statements into English, which is the language in which I and half our team need to receive evidence so that we can understand it. And Mr. President, what is the size of the documents that we are uh, talking about? Uh, at this point, we have calculated that we have received 155 statements, uh, which total uh, 2,838 pages in English alone, 2,838 almost 3,000 pages. Uh, and on top of this, the prosecution has already warned us that the number of disclosed statements will basically double since there are at least another 190 statements still to come. And more than this, there may be an unknown number of documents still to come since the case three uh, and four investigations are presently still ongoing. Uh, now, as you are well aware, you uh, granted us uh, two days to, uh, I quote, familiarize ourselves uh, with the statements that we received in uh, February last month. 
ces déclarations que nous avons revues. We calculated that we would have read, uh, we, have, we would have to read all the English statements at the rate of one page per minute uh, over those two days uh, without sleeping, to simply read everything in that time. This doesn't even take into account the, the fact, of course, that we also need to analyze uh, the evidence contained. Uh, Mr. President, your honest, the, ex the situation uh, for us is extremely Concerning. La situation est extrêmement préoccupante. Uh, make no mistake, what we are seeing, uh, I believe, is the international co-prosecutor and international co-investigating judge uh, dumping uh, large parts of the case and uh, three and four case file into ours. Probably, and if that's different, I, I'll, I'll hear that, uh, in part to ensure that those investigative efforts are not in vain uh, if those cases never go to trial. Uh, and more disturbingly, though, what these disclosures show is that critical aspects of our appeal in case 002-01 remain under active investigation in cases 3 and 4, while at the same time being tried at first instance and on appeal. Uh, Mr. President, to give you just one illustration of this, two of the case four statements we received in January were of a witness who appeared here in court one month later. The investigator the investigators interviewed that witness in October 2014, at the time when this chamber was already scheduling the witness to appear in court. Excuse me. Had hearings not been uh, postponed until January, I doubt that we would even have received those statements and the critical evidence they contained before the witness appeared in court. Uh, but it's not just about the volume of evidence, although that in itself is overwhelming um, and uh, beyond our team's resources, as I will discuss uh, a little bit later. There's a more critical issue uh, here and one that the prosecution does not seem uh, to understand, and that is the relevance of the evidence in the statements. This is, in our view, fundamentally, uh, this, in our view, fundamentally affects the question um, of when we should be reviewing the evidence and when we should be cross-examining witnesses about that evidence. Based on what we have been able to review from the evidence, it is of uh, critical relevance to our case, to case 002-2 overall and also to issues which are Avec contested and are now being appealed in case 002-01. And some of the evidence fundamentally affects what evidence we now have on the case file about several key issues which are being contested in this case and on appeal. And, Mr. President, to avoid any misunderstanding about this, I think it's worth uh, me explaining just what topics exactly are covered in the evidence uh, without, of course, going into uh, too much uh, unnecessary detail. And from what we have uh, read thus far, first of all, uh, witnesses seem to talk or talk about the existence of divisive internal factions within the CPK. There is testimony that, uh, that there were four internal factions within the CPK. Those affiliated with the Viet Minh, the nationalistic Khmer Rouge, the Sionukist Khmer Rouge, and Khmer Rouge from China, including Pol Pot. There is information in the new evidence on factions, especially in the northwest and east uh, zones. And there is information identifying Sao Pim as the leader uh, of one faction plotting a revolt uh, against Pol Pot. Uh, witnesses uh, also detail the acts and conducts of several CPK leaders, including our client Nguyen Chia himself, and also Tamok, Sao Pim, and Runim. Witnesses describe events contested across all trial segments in case 002-02, as well as events already adjudicated in case 002-01 and now on appeal in the Supreme Court chamber.
au cours du premier procès, deuxième dossier. Uh, witnesses uh, discuss the acts and conduct of witnesses who have testified, who are scheduled to testify, who have been requested to testify or should now uh, be called to testify. Uh, witnesses also uh, detail authority structure and uh, operations in the southwest and northwest zones. And finally, Mr. President, your honest witnesses provide evidence directly relevant to the existence of policies, including forced marriage and the treatment of the Cham and Vietnamese. Uh, now, the prosecution uh, yesterday tried to dismiss our argument that we should not be uh, hearing testimony of two upcoming leading cadres uh, which were scheduled to testify. And I believe they argued that of the new evidence we have received, there was only one uh, relevant piece of information, which was a direct reference to one of the two cadres. I also note that, in general, the prosecution has tried to decide which trial segments the statements are relevant to and then to disclose uh, statements ahead of uh, or during uh, that segment. However, uh, Mr. President, with all due respect, given it is us uh, and not the prosecution running our case. Due, the prosecution's assessments have often been uh, inaccurate and unhelpful, uh, including uh, their assessment from yesterday. Uh, dismissing the potential relevance of evidence to a witness just because it doesn't contain a direct reference to that specific uh, witness is, I believe, uh, an oversimplistic and not an appropriate way to evaluate the relevance uh, of evidence. As I said yesterday, we believe that these two leading cadres will be able to provide potentially critical evidence on uh, authority, structure and operations in the southwest zone. This evidence, in turn, is the essential connection needed to be established between the zone uh, and Nguyen Chia in order to convict him with respect to events at Trumkok and Krankachan. As I also said yesterday, while not having yet been able to read all the disclosures we received in the last two weeks, we were able to identify that they frequently mentioned the authority structure in relation to Trump, Kok and Krang Tachan. And as I said yesterday, the terms uh, Sector 13, Trump, Kok District, and Office 204 are mentioned a total of 324 times in these uh, new statements. Um, uh, Mr. President, when we look at the disclosure statements more generally, we can see that across the board they seem to contain information uh, of critical relevance to multiple aspects, aspects of the defense case, not just specific witnesses and specific uh, events examined in a uh, specific trial uh, segments, excuse me. And all, all of this evidence uh, requires further analysis before uh, the current trial segment can proceed. <coughs> Quite frankly, Your Honours, it is the right of the accused to have time to, pro to process this evidence and consider how it impacts not only uh, on the events contested in the current trial segment, but how it affects our overall uh, case strategy. It should be obvious, but to be perfectly clear, our overall strategy informs the way we approach every trial segment and every witness, civil party and expert called to testify in each segment. If we push ahead relentlessly with trial 
and continue to receive evidence in a slow trickle, this will create further difficulties for us and the trial. It already has. For example, from what we have seen in the statements given to us in the last two weeks, uh, we would have asked different questions to expert and witness Elizabeth Becker and possibly to the several Krantachan prisoners and cadres who uh, already had appeared. And, and now we may have uh, to request that they are uh, recalled. This may delay the trial and threaten the efficient use of the court's limited resources. We will also need to submit this newly disclosed evidence to the Supreme Court chamber as it is, we believe, relevant to our appeal in case 002-01. This will also slow down and significantly complicate appeal proceedings and especially the upcoming appeal hearings. Mr. President, it is all for all these reasons that we ask that we adjourn hearings for now and alternatively that we finish this segment by hearing all witnesses except for the leading cadres. In addition, we propose that if uh, and when we do start with the next trial segment, uh, we choose a segment that uh, is most likely uh, least affected by the ongoing disclosures. So a crime site basically not in the southwest zone or the northwest zone. And from what we can understand, this is probably the segment on the 1st uh, January dam. And beyond this, Mr. President, we need adequate time to review the disclosed statements before we can begin on segments that are uh, more affected. Now let me turn to another important uh, aspect, which we didn't discuss yesterday uh, at all, and that's the evidence on the Khmer Krom. I would like to highlight to the chamber uh, this theme, this theme which has been, as, it's, as it seems, consistently emerging uh, in the case three and four statements. And that is the distinct focus on the experiences uh, of the Khmer Krom within uh, DK regime. In an earlier hearing this month, we already highlighted our concerns uh, about the intended relevance of the Khmer Krom evidence for case 002-02. As we all know, the relevance of Khmer Krom experience in experiences in case 2 has long been uh, contested. The Khmer Krom community has lobbied for the experiences to be prosecuted within the context of case 2 as a genocide and maltreatment of a specific group. And these efforts are noted in the media and in filings and other documents on our case file. However, back at the start of case uh, 002, uh, the co-prosecutors decided uh, not to include the Khmer Krom as a specific group in the introductory submission. Despite the lobbying, uh, they also didn't file a supplementary submission. And instead, uh, they merely filed a limited request for investigative action. As you uh, have been able to see, it is detailed clearly in our motion. Uh, but at the time, ECCC spokesman Lars Olsen told the Cambodia Daily uh, in 2010 that the co-prosecutor's failure to file uh, a supplementary submission quote, uh, was not a mistake, unquote. He is on record uh, when he is saying, and I quote again, there was a reason uh, why they didn't do it. I know that reason, but I can't tell you. End of quote. Maybe we hear the reason uh, today. And because the co-prosecutors didn't include the Khmer Krom as a targeted group in their introductory or supplementary submissions, the result was that the Khmer Krom were not identified as a targeted group 
in the closing order, or as an alleged victim of genocide. There are only very limited mentions of the Khmer Krom in the closing order at all. And Mr. President, Your Honours, given that the Khmer Krom are not a targeted group in case 002, then the consistent focus on Khmer Krom experiences in the statements that we received uh, from case Alors, 3 and case 4, that deeply troubles us. Le, le Specifically, we are becoming more and more concerned that the international co-prosecutor intends to effectively expand uh, the scope of case 002-2 by prosecuting Khmer Krom experiences as those of a, what we like to call, quasi-targeted group and a quasi-victim of genocide. What it boils down to is that we are concerned that he is seeking to do this by, if you allow me to use that word, sneaking the Khmer Krom in through the back door of including their experience within that of the Vietnamese, despite the distinct nature of the two groups and the experience of the Khmer Krom not being specifically charged in the closing order. It certainly appears that witnesses' specific identities as Khmer Krom has been relevant at least uh, to the co-prosecutors, uh, the civil party lawyers and this chamber. Uh, indeed, as we also described in our motion, you might recall that even after one of the witnesses who recently testified stressed that he was not a Khmer Krom and had never said he was a Khmer Krom, Judge Laverne uh, continued to press the witness on whether he nevertheless considered himself a Khmer Krom. <coughs> Mr. President, Given the focus on Khmer Krom experiences and given the prosecution's track record on Khmer Krom issues, we have requested in our motion that the Chamber assures the parties that the Khmer Krom will not be included uh, as a quasi-targeted group in case 002 uh, the following point, Mr. President, I would like to make is um, the legal status of statements disclosed from cases 3 and 4. We are concerned about that legal status. We are concerned about what will happen if cases 3 and 4 do not go to trial. Even if two of the suspects have now been charged in absentia, Prime Minister Hun Sen's recent statements to the international community and the Cambodian government attitude towards the case suggest that there is a significant possibility that this will uh, ultimately be the case. And if cases three and four do indeed fail to make it to trial, we do not know what impact this may have on the validity of statements gathered uh, during their investigation. We don't know how this will affect case 002-02 and how this situation uh, will be managed. Uh, for example, after now trying to make every effort uh, to read the statements, is it possible that we'll be ultimately told that the statements are excluded and that we are now have to uh, unread them. We don't know. And we think that at the very, le at the very least this needs further uh, consideration when we are thinking about how to manage uh, this disclosure process. Then another issue, Mr. President, um, we are also concerned about whether the case 3 and 4 case files are also, also contain other relevant evidence in addition to witness and civil party statements, for example, uh, documents. Frankly, we have no business with the international court investigating judge in case cases three and four, uh, just as he, I think, has no business in this courtroom. And that is why we have asked that the Chamber order the International Co-Prosecutor to advise you and all of us whether there may indeed be other types of relevant evidence on those, on those case files. And if so, 
Uh, we ask the chamber to order the prosecution to request the disclosure of this evidence as soon as possible. De demander à ce que soit communiqué ces preuves dès que possible. Then the disclosure conditions. We spoke Passons briefly. The civil party lawyers spoke briefly about it yesterday as well. La partie civile en ont brièvement parlé hier. In our motion, we have asked the Chamber to exercise its power to maintain good order in the trial by quashing the onerous disclosure conditions that have been imposed on us. These conditions are, for instance, we cannot receive the statements electronically. We receive only one paper copy of each statement in each available language. Only our paid staff can review the statements, our interns cannot, although I note that the prosecution interns apparently can. Uh, for the statements to be worth searchable and reviewable by multiple staff members at the same time, we have to scan, print, and run electronic text recognition processes on each statement uh, disclosed. Given the volume of data and information technology constraints, this is an extremely time-consuming process. And I think these conditions should have never been imposed on the defense by a party without standing in case 002. And I believe they are possibly irrelevant now that the international co-investigating judge has laid charges against two suspects in cases 3 and 4. They should now be removed these conditions. Finally, Mr. President, my last uh, point time, that is about the time and resource constraints on the defense. Let me just say a very short word about the constraints that we are facing. As I mentioned earlier, we, we received about 80% of the statements la less than two weeks ago and even yesterday. However, in the time, you can see that most defense team members have been here in the courtroom for four days a week. This is because, simply because we have, uh, because of the limitations we have in the possible size of our team. As I mentioned yesterday, the prosecution has had uh, at least six international prosecutors leading examination um, and has rotated its support staff. We have just two co-lawyers. In effect, we have only one additional day per week uh, and our evenings and weekends to review the thousands of pages of disclosures. We have only one day a week to discuss the extensive evidence uh, in the disclosed statements with our client Nguyen Chia and seek his instructions. Mr. President, we have to do all of this alongside daily trial preparation. We have to do it all without the support of the defense interns. And it seems we have to do it while at the same time continually having prosecutors drop off new disclosures to us. And we have given it our best effort throughout case 002 to maintain an understanding of the case file. We have been trying to read these new disclosures even while being in this courtroom full time for four days a week. However, it's just uh, not possible. We have not been able to read, let alone properly analyze all of the statements disclosed thus far. It is quite simply physically impossible, despite all uh, the, I'm sure, well-intended prosecutor's suggestions. We don't have the resources or the time, and what limited time we have also gets wasted with the extra time it takes for us to process uh, the disclosures just to make them usable. Um, I'm finishing, Mr. President, Your Honours, we cannot keep going on like this. If the disclosure process will be continuing in a similar manner, and it seems like it may, then we will be forced to make a request for additional resources just to try to cope. But even if this request were granted, we still need additional time so that the key members of our team have a chance to understand the contents of the disclosures. This is uh, what our professional responsibility as lawyers dictates that we must do. We are now being asked to press on 
on ahead with reading new evidence alongside our full-time full daily work when the prosecution had at least a head start of several months, probably much longer. In fact, some of the statements are considerably older, dating even back to 2011. So that is a considerable head start they have on us. Obviously, let that be clear, we don't expect to have the same amount of time as that, considering the focus uh, on trial expediency, but we do need time. Thank you. President, thank you um, very much, uh, Mr. Gopé. Now I hand over the floor to uh, Council for Mr. Kyosun Pond. You may proceed. Council Gong Sum On. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours, everyone in the meeting. As for my team, we have the same issue as mentioned by uh, Victor Mr. Victor Gopé. Find it difficult in the processing of the documents that we have received. Très difficile de d'étudier tous les documents dont nous sommes saisis. As we may be aware, concerning the notice of the co-prosecutor, the statesmen are in cases zero three and zero four. Nous parlons ici des procès verbaux d'audition des dossiers zero zero trois et zero zero quatre. As of now, we do not have sufficient time and means. Jusqu'à présent. Nous n'avons eu ni le temps suffisant ni les moyens suffisants and prepare the defense pour for our clients. lire tous ces documents et préparer correctement la défense de notre client. We indeed need time to Nous avons besoin de examine temps, evidence effet, put by the co-prosecutors. Co In relation to the document, the documents uh, we have received a voluminous documents. Nous so far, en avons reçu énormément. we have received uh, 16 binders of uh, documents. As mentioned by uh, Mr. Copé, and the document consists of um, almost 3,000 pages. Et tous ces documents représentent plus de, près and de 3, pages. as we know, the documents are of, a very, of uh, different information and we need time to look at and examine all the information in the documents. And concerning the translation of uh, the document that we have received, I think it is also difficult and we have faced uh, challenges. We observe that some of the documents that we have received, some uh, some are available in French and some Certains are not available in uh, French, uh, and we need uh, ne le sont pas. to have the documents uh, translated. Il faut donc que ces documents qui ne sont pas encore en français soient traduits. Actually, for such a huge uh, document, uh, we do not need only time dit, to examine all those documents. We need time to process, to analyze uh, those documents, and we need to know contenu. what content in the document and nous how those documents relate one another. And uh, we need also to consider whether the statesman in cases 03 and 04 relates and reflects uh, what stated in cases in case 02. We need uh, a lot of time to examine all these documents. And I in what. I invite you all to consider that uh, the document that we have just received are uh, the documents the uh, given by the co-prosecutor for our perusal. The document uh, delivered by the co-prosecutors are considered to be evidence sont considérés comme des éléments de preuve as long as they met the criteria il faut bien sûr in que les critères établis internal rule 83.87.3 and 4 
Et il faut notamment que les dispositions des règles 87.3 et 87.4 We need soient to analyze the documents and we need to bring any a preliminary objection uh, concerning the document which uh, are put by parties. Number three, I believe we do not, we perhaps do not share our different understandings. I believe that yesterday the co-prosecutor mentioned about the documents uh, which they uh, gave to us. We have different grounds, we have different uh, reasons in relation to the defense of uh, our client. <coughs> pour la défense de notre client. So, I think that uh, we, the co-prosecutor, we, the uh, lawyer for the client, we have different views uh, from those of the co-prosecutor and uh, even the defense the counsel for the two accusers may have different views in relation to the document that we have received after our analysis. Number four, we need to determine and categorize the documents and we need to distinguish between statesmen of witnesses and civil parties. And we need to consider whether the statesmen have already uh, been testified by the witness. The statement by witnesses who comes to testify before the chamber can be used immediately. And uh, we have to examine every evidence uh, to be testified by those individuals. Tous les éléments de preuve avancés par ces personnes qui viennent déposer. Some statement cannot be used if uh, there is no decision on admissibility. Si elles ne sont pas déclarées recevables, ou s'il y a des Number problèmes five. de recevabilité qui se posent. We, the counsel for Mr. Kilsompon, we Nous, are not the parties of uh, cases 0, 3, and 0, 4, and we cannot have access to the case file. Nous pas accès Furthermore, au dossier 003 et 004. we find some of the examples concerning the inaccuracies of the uh, document. And uh, we may bring this matter before the chamber. As we can see, uh, the statement of Mr. Wan Sun is different. Dans le cas de Van Suen, from the statement that eh bien, he gave to the OCIJ, we have to be cautious de, and de, mindful de, of all and every statement, because if we do not have time to examine and analyze uh, the statement, and nous we nous cannot uh, uh, know what is si in those statements. President, you may not proceed, international co-prosecutor. To counsel, I did not, I certainly do not want to interrupt him, but if I don't uh, interrupt, I'm afraid there could be damage. I heard counsel mentioning names of witnesses, and we are, although the gallery is empty, we are in open session. I would just uh, remind counsel that it's probably better off not to mention any names when we're talking about cases three and four disclosures. Uh,
Uh, Mr. President, I would like to Monsieur respond Président, to the observation made by the International Co-Prosecutor. This uh, witness uh, has already been has already testified before this court. That is why I uh, brought uh, his name up voilà before your honours. Generally, as a general rule, avoid mentioning the names defense. of witnesses. And council, the chamber is aware of what has to be done with documents, so if you could perhaps concentrate on the relevant issues of this subject. Council, thank you very much. I would like to resume my submission. As I said, uh, all the statements by witnesses disais, need to be examined and analyzed by us. And we need to compare the statements. In addition, we need also to verify the, the written record of the statement with the audio recording. And uh, we have to find vidéo, out whether there is any errors uh, between the, the recording and the statement taken by uh, the investigators. In the past experience, we received a uh, huge amount of documents in case 002. Actually, uh, the, the matter in the previous time concerning the document which have uh, which gave to us uh, in the previous time uh, may jeopardize the rights of the accused, accused and pawn. So Mais we do not allow this uh, experience to repeat uh, before this chamber. If the statement is Conducive, conducive to ascertain the truth, the party should request for the appearance of the witness in accordance with the internal rule. And uh, I encourage that the uh, rights of confrontation and cross-examination should be respected. We trying to find means and time so that we can consider the statements. And in the future, there may be a request from us to recall certain witnesses. If uh, the defense team is not entitled to enough time to examine all those statements uh, submitted or put by, uh, the, 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 by the co-prosecutor. Now, I would like to seek appropriate time and enough time to examine the documents put by the co-prosecutor. And these documents, as we all know, are from cases 03 and 04. As of now, we cannot uh, read the document in detail. So this concludes my submission. Thank you very much, Mr. President. President, Le President, Judge Fenn, you may have the floor. La est la juge Fenn. I would like to address a specific la question to both defense counsel. I don't expect an answer now. The reason why I'm, saying, why I'm asking the question now is to give you time to think while the other parties um, make their comments. <laughs> Specifically, at, and at this point of time, how much additional preparation time do you need? Thank you. I apologize. I misunderstood. I was waiting for the defense response. You said to wait. To laugh to us. Excuse me. Your Honours, first of all, let me begin by saying that the co-prosecutors recognize 
that this is a difficult Tout issue, dire que les that sont and you have ongoing disclosures from ongoing in investigations during a trial. It puts a burden on everyone. It puts a burden on the defense. We understand that. It, it brings issues to Your Honor's attention, and it certainly brings a burden on the prosecution. We have been working diligently for many, many months trying, seeking these disclosures to have them come forward in as uh, expeditious a manner as possible. But having said that, let me also respond to some of the defense complaints because I find that their motion mixing so many different issues, issues that are properly before the Supreme Court about possible new evidence on appeal, issues that are properly before the investigating judges regarding the conditions of disclosure, and contradictory complaints here. They complain that the prosecution is dumping material on them, the amount of material. They complain about the number of pages, and yet they ask the, Your Honors to order us to do more disclosures, to, to ask us to do, investigate all of the documents on the other case files and disclose those. Um, they also complain that they get these documents late. Your Honor, we have been uh, talking about this issue of disclosures from three and four for approximately, well, since well before the start of this trial, since at least approximately this time or a little later last year. The investigations in three and four, the fact that they were ongoing and are ongoing, is public knowledge. The investigative judges have disclosed the locations that are under investigations in three and four. The defense has known that since long before we started this phase of the trial, case 0202. So the defense also says that while they complain about us dumping the material, they say the material is very relevant to them and highly relevant to their defense. So they can't have it both ways, complain that we're giving them material, that it's too much, and then say they want more and it's very relevant. We want to work with them and work with you to try to find uh, ways to go forward as expeditiously as possible without disrupting these proceedings. We very much appreciate hearing that the defense teams want the case to proceed expeditiously. So I think it's probably most beneficial to go for the to the request for relief from the defense one by one and to address those issues. First, regarding the adjournment of the hearings. Frankly, we do not believe that is necessary. The amount of material that the defense has talked about, approximately even a little less than 3,000 pages, in terms of international criminal law cases, tribunal cases, this is a small, very small amount of documents. If you look at other cases, uh, Mladic case or Karadzic case, you see regularly the prosecution ongoing disclosures of as much as 50,000 pages and, and higher at a time to the defense teams. So it's not the number itself in the context of a case this complicated is not that great. We've also haven't seen the defense actually justify why any of the material would be necessary for the examination of the upcoming witnesses. They've been very, very general and unspecific, simply saying that because these witnesses were leading cadre, that they need more time to prepare. But they haven't said why the material that was disclosed or is to be disclosed would be necessary for the examination of that witness. Now we've heard Nunchia defense assert that material that they've received recently would have changed their questions for a witness who testified publicly, Elizabeth Becker. They haven't explained what that is. Now, it's not difficult to think of another question I should have asked a witness. What else could we have asked a witness related to this statement? But the test has to be whether it has a substantial effect, whether it's significant to the testimony of that witness and significant to the defense. They haven't even tried to actually explain what that is. But we recognize that there could be situations where material is disclosed that does substantially affect testimony of a witness who's already completed their testimony. In that case, 
The procedure would have to be that the parties make an application. Whichever party feels that the material is necessary and a further examination of that witness is necessary. And the court would then weigh whether the real relevance of the disclosure to the testimony of that witness versus the inconvenience and, and the delay in the trial caused by recalling a witness to testify. So we think it's possible and the trial should go forward with the disclosures ongoing. We can't do anything about the fact that the investigation is ongoing. Disclosures will continue and we have to wait for the investigative judges to make a decision, the international co-investigating judge to make a decision on disclosures. And uh, that requires a review of the statements by, I presume, by his staff and some uh, material that could be sensitive to witness protection or safety is redacted. It's time consuming. And frankly, I suspect it will be probably more time consuming now that it's been publicly announced that individuals have been charged in absentia because that means that there will be many more filings from the defense teams on those cases before the investigating judges, which, by the way, we will also have to be engaged in responding to. So our workload will go up exponentially also. The second request for relief by the defense was to schedule a trial management meeting, which your honors have done. Uh, the third request, I'm going paragraph 19, going through the relief, paragraph C, was to just consult with the defense in terms of the length of any adjournment needed. Well, the court is doing that, but again, it's our position that we should be able to proceed on the current schedule. And then in D, the defense suggests that the next trial segment be the something like the first January dam. Uh, we have no problem with that. And we've even suggested uh, another change in the order that the Your Honors consider putting back the Trapantanam Dam a bit further back because that location will have many, many uh, disclosed statements that we will be expecting to disclose. Now, in the, the paragraph E, the defense asks your honors at this point in the middle of the trial to assure the parties that the Khmer Krom will not be included as a quote quasi unquote targeted group in the case 2 2 trial. Well, your honor, the charges in this case are the closing order. The charges are the ch charges. I assume what the defense is now asking your honors to do, especially given their objection to Judge Laverne's question, is to prevent evidence of harm committed against the Khmer Krom people from being admitted as evidence in this trial. And we're absolutely opposed to that. The Khmer Krom people suffered. They were victims, and they were victimized for various reasons, everything from picking up a coconut, which you weren't supposed to do, to the fact that they were seen as perceived enemies, which is a big part of this case. Because they had come originally from Vietnam, they were seen as perceived enemies. And they were targeted as a group by the Khmer Rouge. There's no doubt about that. Their evidence should not be excluded in this case. Paragraph F, the defense asks your honors to order the international co-prosecutors to advise the parties whether there may be relevant evidence on the case files of three and four, and to, dis to request the international co-investigating judge to disclose evidence of this nature as soon as possible. And I have absolutely no problem with your honors making that order. That We understand that is our obligation. And finally, the defense asks your honors to quash the disclosure conditions opposed upon the defense when the international co-investigating judge gave the defense access to material from the investigations in case three and four. I don't have to tell your honors that by law here in the ECCC, investigations are confidential. 
the international co-investigating judge made an exception to the confidentiality, recognizing the importance on our motion of making sure that your honors and the defense and all parties to these proceedings had relevant information, information that's relevant to issues in case two that comes from the investigation in cases three and four. As far as the conditions that were imposed upon the defense, I am sympathetic to the defense about this, and I would suggest that they take that up with the international co-investigating judge. I would gladly support them to ask for some relaxation of that. But of course, I think it's also necessary for the defense, uh, and I think they can do that, this, to build up trust, to show that they will respect the confidentiality of the, that material and use it only as appropriate and under the conditions that the judge allows. But I certainly would understand the defense would want those conditions relaxed. I hope they will be relaxed. I would even uh, support them to what extent my, I have any influence. But I would say that publicly, I support them in getting uh, a relaxation of those conditions. And as far as addressing some of the more specifics about our disclosure, I'd ask Mr. Lysak be allowed to address you, who is very, the most familiar with the issues. Uh, good. Uh, President, uh, the Deputy Co-Prosecutor, we need to take a, a break now, and we will resume at 3 o'clock. Let me uh, have a break.